Isaiah 54, verses 2 through 3. Enlarge the place of your tent. In, uh, and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwelling. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. Well, watch this. For you shall expand to the right and to the left, and your descendants will inherit the nations and make desolate cities inhabited. See, watch what he says. He says, I'm going to so bless you. I'm going to so increase you. I'm going to so enlarge you. Watch that it's going to allow you to be a part of reclaiming culture. That's what it says. It says that your descendants will cause the cities that have been desolate to be inhabited. That's reformation. But it can only happen when we're enlarged. So God, listen, if you don't hear anything else, you've got to hear this. God wants to bless you and enlarge you and increase you for the sake of his kingdom purpose in the earth. He wants us blessed. He wants us increased, but watch, he wants to do it for the sake of his kingdom. Now, the Apostle Paul, Ward, actually spoke about spheres this morning just a little bit. But in 2 Corinthians 10, 12 through 18, we have the Apostle Paul talking about spheres or metrons or measurements of rule. In other words, boundaries that are set on your life and that as long as you function within those boundaries, you have great, great uh, effect. So watch what the Apostle Paul is saying. You know, read, read with that men's mindset. For we dare not class ourselves or compare ourselves with those who commend themselves. But they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. Now we got to all admit that's a problem for most of us. That we measure ourselves by somebody else rather than by the assignment of God on our life. Or the grace of God. Listen, I, it's wrong for me to measure myself by someone else who had a different grace on their life than what I have. Completely wrong. And yet we do it. It says, we, however, will not boast beyond measure or outside our sphere but within the limits of the sphere which God appoints us, a, f a sphere which especially includes you. So Paul said, look, we're, 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 in with, we're within our boundaries. We're within the realm that God has called us to. For we are not overextending ourselves as though our, um, as though our authority did not extend to you. For it was to you that we came with the gospel of Christ, not boasting of things beyond measure, that is in other men's labors, but having hope that as your faith is increased, we shall be greatly enlarged by you in our sphere. To preach, what's it, why, why are they being enlarged? To preach the gospel in the regions beyond you and not to boast in another man's sphere of accomplishment. But he who glories, let him glory in the Lord, for not he who commends himself is approved, but whom the Lord commends. So let me talk to you about a larger sphere out of those scriptures. Some principles to, as we as we begin to receive these mantles as a breaker to break out. What are some principles to stepping into a larger sphere? Number one, watch this. It sounds contradictory, but watch this. No self promotion. I hate self promotion, even when I see it in myself. No self promotion. Paul said we don't class ourselves or compare ourselves or commend ourselves. What does that mean? I'm not promoting myself. I'm not trying to get you to believe how great I am. This is the real problem. There are things that I don't simply put on Facebook because it's, it has a stench of self-promotion in it. Because I realize if I post that, there's going to be some people, maybe even most, that will say, oh, that's wonderful. But I'll know there's a stench attached to it of me trying to make somebody think I'm a big deal. And I got news for you, for all of you out there that think I am, all two of you. I'm not. I hate self-importance. I hate it. That's, that's, one of the, that's one of the problems I have with some of the movements in the church today. 
I know we have to have, we have to have a sense that we are important to the purpose of God. I get that. But then it slips over a line, it seems, and there is a sense of self-importance that makes you mistreat other people. And God will never trust you with realms of authority or a greater sphere as long as that is a piece of who you are. We are here to serve. Matthew 12, 18 through 19. Watch this. Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him. He will declare justice to the Gentiles. This is the Father speaking of the Son. Watch. He will not quarrel nor cry out, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. How many times did Jesus heal people and say that, see, nobody knows it? Literally, he would tell them that. Don't go tell anybody. Why? Because he wasn't going to allow himself to get pulled into self-promotion. Oh, we see somebody get healed. We're going to let everybody on Facebook, YouTube, and anything else we can know about it. Now, I'm not saying that's wrong if it's for the glory of God. But if it is, if it's designed to make you seem like you're great, we need to re-examine our motives. There should be no self-promotion. I don't believe that God can trust anybody with real kingdom authority as long as there is that self-promoting spirit in us. And the Holy Spirit is the one that has to help us understand when something's appropriate and when it's not. I mean, there's been so many things I put on Facebook that I deleted it before I sent it. Because I thought, that sounds so wrong. So I just quit sharing testimonies on Facebook. Because it, I, I've never found a way to say it that it didn't sound like Robert Henderson was trying to make himself seem and appear to be great. Now, again, I'm not telling you that that's wrong for you. I'm telling you that I believe that we have to really let God examine our hearts. Because if Jesus, the Son of God, said go and let nobody, nobody know about it, He didn't lift up his voice in the streets. He didn't quarrel. He didn't fight to be known. He trusted, watch this, that any promotion came from the Spirit of the Lord. And when God promotes, he knows how to do it the right way. Because when he promotes, here's what's going to happen. Even when God promotes, you're going to have jealousy and envy and all sorts of stuff to deal with. 